Hey everyone, welcome back. Today let's talk about optic neuritis and how it relates to multiple sclerosis. Let's jump in. So let's begin. What is optic neuritis? Optic neuritis is swelling of the optic nerve, and there are several causes of optic neuritis. The most commonly discussed cause of optic neuritis is multiple sclerosis. So what are the symptoms of optic neuritis? Optic neuritis can cause a variety of symptoms, but there's a couple common themes. Number one, you have pain with eye movements, meaning when you look left, look right, there's pain with eye movement. You can also have decreased vision. The quality of your vision varies tremendously from 2040 to even in rare cases with no light perception at all, meaning everything is pitch black. But most of the time, your vision is slightly dim. Specifically, color vision is affected. So when you look at one eye versus the other, you'll notice that red, blues, yellows, etc. look a lot more vivid in one eye versus another. That's the classic sign of optic neuritis. And the interesting thing about the symptoms of optic neuritis is that things like a hot shower can make your symptoms a lot worse. So who's at higher risk of optic neuritis? Classically, we think about 15 to 45 year old women. In fact, about 75% of cases affect women as compared to men. And with optic neuritis, there is a correlation with multiple sclerosis. But note, you don't have to have multiple sclerosis if you have symptoms of optic neuritis. How do we make the diagnosis of optic neuritis? Optic neuritis is a clinical diagnosis, meaning there's no blood test or scan that makes a diagnosis. It's based on physical exam. And what is the most important sign to make that diagnosis? Classically, it's when you have what's called a relative afferent pupillar defect or an abnormal response to light with your pupils. However, in anyone with optic neuritis, I do get a scan, specifically an MRI of the brain in orbits. Why is that? Remember, multiple sclerosis is associated with optic neuritis. So I get the MRI test to see if the patient is at an increased likelihood of getting multiple sclerosis. In fact, if your MRI is completely normal, the likelihood of you getting multiple sclerosis is about 25%. In contrast, if your MRI shows some changes classic with multiple sclerosis, such as white matter lesions, that probability increases to 75%. And the reason why it matters so much is if we catch multiple sclerosis early, we can start various medications to decrease the likelihood of that patient getting multiple sclerosis. And I know I'm not a neurologist, but what's that medication that we're talking about? It's Avinox. It's an interferon medication that is intended to decrease the likelihood of you developing multiple sclerosis. So that's why that MRI is so important. But let's just say the presentation is a little bit atypical. I do order some blood work to rule things out for like syphilis, lupus, sarcoid, etc. Just to make sure that we're not missing another diagnosis. So how do we treat optic neuritis? The interesting part about optic neuritis is that typically patients resolve on their own. In certain cases though, we do give IV steroids to shorten the time it takes to recover. Note that oral steroids can actually make things worse, so IV steroids is usually indicated for certain patients. So that was a crash course on multiple sclerosis, but let me dive into one more subject. It's called Devic's disease or NMO. In NMO, there's a couple more classic findings. Typically, you have daytime sleepiness, you have nausea and vomiting, and you have hiccups. The prognosis is much worse. In fact, the recovery rate is a lot lower and vision can be permanently decreased. So it's important for your doctor to make that distinction. Don't forget as always, your eyes tell. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.